Hi everyone, welcome to DevOps Info Channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, the continuation of the guest access in the Azure Active Directory. We have already talked about the overview of the guest access in the previous uh, one of the video. So today we are going to talk specifically about uh, one of the option, which is the Azure AD B2B collaboration. So with the Azure AD, it's possible. We know that uh, we can easily enable the collaboration across the organization boundaries uh, by using the Azure AD functionalities. Um, so coming to the topic guest access, um, it's very important to know that, uh, you know, like uh, we need to provide a solution uh, like where the users can share the platform to uh, the partners or the vendors in a secure and a controlled way. So uh, there are multiple ways to give the guest access. Uh, as we already discussed in the previous video, there are three types of guest access, which is the first one is the B2B collaboration. In the B2B collaboration, uh, it's the best way to provide access uh, to your services with more options to control and customize based on your requirement. Uh, like we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Uh, and the second option is like B2B Direct Connect. Yeah, B2B Direct Connect is the best option for consuming the services without creating a guest account in your tenant. Uh, however, this feature is limited to the team share channel at this moment. So uh, if you are looking to expand the B2B Direct Connect to other applications or Office 365 services, it is not possible. Microsoft will improve this feature and can extend to the other services in the future, but we are not sure about the roadmap of that part. And the third one is the business to uh, customer identity. So here like, uh, Customers can use their own identity uh, as a service, like for example, Outlook, Hotmail, or the, any of their uh, personal accounts. Uh, but you know, like this is not benefit uh, or helpful in case of you're rolling out on an enterprise organization level. Uh, you don't have much control on uh, controlling your data. Well, coming to talk about the best option for the Azure AD guest access at the moment for enterprise rollout of the Azure AD B2B collaboration gives you the all opportunities to do customization. So Azure AD B2B collaboration, uh, you know, you can sh securely share your company's applications and services while maintaining control on your own corporate data. Uh, like for example, uh, even uh, enabling this, after enabling this, it's just, it's doing a simple invitation process. You have to send a in, uh, guest access invite, uh, email would be received and the user needs to do the redemption process. And after they complete the redemption process, like it will let the partner to use their own credentials and access your company resources. There are a lot of benefits of doing that because uh, in this case, uh, when you do the B2C, uh, the partner is using your own identity, their own identity management solution. There is no external administrative overhead for managing the accounts on your site because uh, the guest users are signing into your apps and services with their own passwords and username. You no need to manage their external account password. And also you no need to sync the accounts or manage the account life cycles. Uh, that is one of the best part uh, of the B2B collaboration. And the most important thing to remember is that the guest access can be given only for the Office 365 applications and the Azure AD apps. If you're looking for uh, providing the guest access to an app which is hosted in the on-premise, that is not possible at this moment. So it's always important to keep that in mind also. And um, also, you know, like uh, when you talk about the guest access, uh, there are multiple ways that you can uh, control uh, the guest access on your tenant. Because uh, the first thing when we talk about the guest access is like we also saw that in the previous video, uh, it's always the external collaboration settings. Like if, uh, if you go to the external collaboration settings, this is the place where you are defining what roles in your organization can invite the external users for B2B collaboration. This is also a very important point when you're setting up the B2B collaboration. For example, uh, in this case, uh, I have like only users assigned to the specific admin roles can invite the guest users. So when you set up automation in a b2b collaboration it's very important to know that you're locking down the guest invite settings to a specific service account that will be used in your automation runbook because when you do the option anyone in the organization can invite uh, or members and users assigned to specific admin roles uh, 
can invite. In that case, okay, uh, admin who is having a specific privilege to uh, invite the guest accounts, they can do, and uh, there's a possibility he can accidentally invite a user who is not supposed to be a guest, and the data leakage will happen from that area. So it's very important to know that, uh, like you always specify the exact roles in your organization and the correct service account so that they can invite the external users for B2B collaboration. For that, it's always recommended to choose the second option. Only users assigned to the specific admin roles can invite the guest users. So the next control uh, we are talking about is the cross rent access settings. So in the cross rent access settings, like this will let you specify what services your partner, for example, contest.com uh, can access. This is not mandatory because uh, if you want to further customize your uh, B2B collaboration, then you can always use the cross rent access settings because uh, you could also specify, for instance, a group and add users uh, from their tenant so that only person present in the group can access uh, your services. So uh, these settings also let, let you to trust the multi-factor authentication claim and device claims uh, or Azure AD hybrid joint device from the other Azure AD organizations. We'll have a look at that in a few minutes. Uh, and the more important thing is like uh, this setting is organization specific and also cannot be used per application. Yeah. So for example, if you're defining an organization for a domain, which is contraso.com, that is applicable for every application that you're going to give access from your resource tenant. So this is like, okay, I cannot define uh, multiple uh, organization for one domain for multiple applications. So if you're defining one organization, it's applicable for every application that they are going to consume in your tenant. So furthermore, like uh, there is also a lot of option. You can define the external collaboration settings in the Office 365 services. Uh, when you define the settings in Office 365 services, they will supersede the permissions from the organization level. For example, when an external sharing is enabled in the SharePoint online, they will take the precedence. However, if you have the control defined in the Azure AD org level, uh, users can invite the B2B uh, collaboration. So if you need to share the applications uh, to the external guest accounts, for example, if they have an application that is uh, on the Azure AD Enterprise apps, uh, at the moment, uh, if you're going for a B2B collaboration, uh, the best of op the option, only option which is available is uh, using a cloud-only security group. So it's also important to consider that uh, the guest accounts are not present in the local AD because uh, they are just an account, a cloud-only identity created in your tenant. Uh, so they can be managed only in the cloud. So if you're looking for any IAM solution to control, uh, there is no option at this moment. Uh, until the third party IAM solution uh, has any connector and it, it is giving you the option to manage the, the guest accounts from that. Uh, you can also explore that options. Um, so, but by default, with the native active local active directory tooling, uh, it's not uh, possible to do the IAM controlling. Um, and the best option is like we can create a cloud only security group uh, and add the required uh, guest accounts. Uh, for example, uh, you can create a dynamic cloud-only security group per country, or uh, you can have some uh, properties uh, that can be picked up uh, per uh, tenant or per uh, partner, and then you can uh, classify them and add it to your uh, guest access. Uh, so having talked about it, uh, so when you talk about the organization settings, like for example, I can come here and click on add the organization. When I do the add organization here, it would ask me for a tenant or domain name. In my case, I'm just going to do DevOps uh, uh, info dot org. This is one of uh, the test tenant, which is uh, in my uh, demo. So here, the moment when I type in, it gives me the name. Yes, it is registered and gives me the tenant ID. So the moment when I click on add, I can go ahead and add the cross tenant settings. So the moment when I add it, uh, it gives me two options, the inbound access and the outbound access. Let's say I'm going and clicking on the inbound access. The inbound access is like something uh, home tenant is trying to access some services in the resource tenant. In our case, the resource tenant is uh, the EC Cloud Info. So when I click on the inbound access, 
you see the default settings. So the default settings, this is like the access status is allow applies to all DevOps cloud ecosystem groups. If I want to further customize, I can click on the customize settings and then I can click uh, access status, allow access, and then applies to all DevOps cloud ecosystem groups. I can also select this and add external users and groups. For example, if I want to add a particular group, I need to get the group ID from that uh, tenant, uh, the owner of the tenant. He needs to give me the group ID. I can specify that group ID over here. And then the moment when I click on add, users who are present only in the group would be able to consume the services from my resource tenant. So this is one of the options because like I can just click on drop down and choose group and then add the group ID. When I do that, okay, the users who is present only in that group would be able to consume my services. It's one of the good option. If you hit into any kind of scenario, you can use this. Um, and um, also there is a other thing which we need to talk about is, uh, yeah, B2B Direct Connect. So if you see the B2B Direct Connect, uh, this is applicable only for uh, uh, the Teams channel, because even if you go to the applications here, uh, in the customized settings, if you go to the applications, uh, if you go and do a select applications, you see only Office 365. But even if you do that, it will not work because the B2B Direct Connect, uh, as per Microsoft, at this moment of this uh, video, is applicable only for the Teams shared channels. Uh, okay, so coming to the B2B collaboration, again, uh, you see the trust settings. This is one of the interesting. Uh, feature that Microsoft has uh, released. So here you can configure whether your conditional access policies will accept the claims from the other Azure AD organization. Uh, for example, uh, a few minutes back, we configured the uh, organization settings for DevOps info, DevOps info uh, uh, org. Okay, so I wanted to give access to a few of the resources uh, in the AC Cloud Info, but I need to set some control before users are going to access my application. In that case, uh, I, what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to trust the claim from the DevOps info, but however, I need to have, uh, they need to have two conditions. Uh, they need to have the MFA configured for all the users who is going to consume application on my tenant, and uh, they need to be in tune manage, uh, uh, which is trust compliant devices. Just in case, if they don't have in tune, they can simply synchronize their uh, devices to the Azure AD. They can have uh, trust hybrid Azure AD joint devices. So in this case, I'm just enforcing two controls. Like for example, if someone is trying to access from DevOps Info is trying to access a service, uh, for example, if it's a SharePoint online uh, or uh, uh, or uh, some Azure AD apps uh, on the Easy Cloud Info, they need to come only if they have the MFA prerequisites complete on their tenant and they should have the hybrid Azure AD joined on their tenant. So if these two conditions are matching only then the access to my application which is present on Easy Cloud Info would be granted. So this is one of the best option which we have uh, uh, because like you no need to create a separate conditional access policies on your side for the guest accounts because here like you're creating a new organization and the new organization you're going to define, okay, uh, I'm going to trust uh, the uh, MFA and accept the claims from other Azure radio organization, and which is giving a better seamless experience for the users. You could imagine, for example, a user uh, who is on DevOps Info is daily, each and every day is working for a project uh, in collaboration with Easy Cloud Info. So every day he comes in, uh, he has already uh, the MFA, uh, and uh, Azure ready joint devices on his tenant. So we are just going to meet the prerequisites which is already completed on his tenant so that there is no problem to challenge again. So if you put enforce MFA on your side, then he need to do the MFA two times just in case if he is doing for the first time. So that is uh, in order to avoid that kind of experience, we have this option. Um, yeah, so this is one of the best way uh, that we can uh, do with Azure ready uh, B2B collaboration uh, and also if you want to do the conditional access, yes, you can also uh, do enforce conditional access on your side uh, and you know like uh, you can set up a policy that can trigger uh, for the guest accounts uh, to register MFA in your tenant. Uh, 
regardless of uh, whether they are registered uh, for MFA in their home tenant or if they are having a hybrid agility joint devices, but that's completely uh, dependent on uh, the strategy that your organization is going at. Um, and also you can also set conditions on the guest accounts, like it can be coming from a managed device uh, that is uh, works with combination on this part. Um, so there are multiple ways to do it, but you can uh, decide based on how you are going to do that uh, based on your uh, strategy. Uh, and also it is important to know that, uh, note that when uh, the access is provided uh, to the external identities, it is always uh, important that we need to make sure that sufficient controls are in place uh, and the lifecycle management is also set up. Uh, because when we talk about uh, giving guest access, it is always recommended not to you know uh, go uh, like for example i go here uh, um, the external identities uh, the external collaboration settings like for example if it's not always recommended to set up this uh, first option anyone in the organization can invite guest users so which means like your external identities is not controlled like uh, there is no sufficient control in place anyone in your organization can invite the guest users and it would be really difficult to do the life cycle management so it's always better to uh, lock down the guest access uh, through the automation so that, uh, you know, like the guest invite is sent only uh, through the, the Graph API, uh, in, in the Graph API commandlets, uh, and then through uh, just uh, some kind of trigger that you're uh, setting up. So that is a kind of the lifecycle management of how to onboard the guest accounts. Um, and also the the other part is like you also need to see like what are the unused guest accounts uh, which is being present in your tenant that is also a possibility the guest accounts it has been invited and users have never used or access to your uh, resources so there are multiple ways to do that um, for example uh, you can also uh, run a, a script to identify the inactive guest users and then which is uh, like for example a guest use which is not used for more than 90 days or 180 days uh, whatever the timeline you define uh, just uh, send them to review for your uh, for the associated uh, owners owners in your organization or you can also remove them uh, and also there is another one which is, which is like uh, the access package uh, but that's completely a different and a extensive subject we'll have a look at that um, maybe uh, in, in the future upcoming videos um, and also the other important part is like the monitoring of the guest account is also possible. Uh, for example, like uh, you need to see like uh, what are the activities that's been done in the guest account. Uh, those activities are always uh, recorded in your Azure AD sign-in logs. Uh, um, you can, uh, you know, like uh, do the Azure Sentinel. Uh, you can send all your uh, Azure AD logs to the Azure Sentinel. And then, uh, you know, like if you want to look into the specific events, you can always look into the specific events and uh, take any action for the guest accounts. I think this is uh, what I wanted to tell uh, because overall in the summary, like using a guest account, we can always have a way to provide access to your application um, and then all controls, like whatever the controls if you want, uh, there are at this moment, uh, at this moment, there are a lot of uh, options which is available uh, to enforce uh, the security on the guest accounts. So, and um, this also helps, uh, you know, like uh, in better collaboration. Uh, and increasing the productivity when you're especially working with your partners um, and for example if you want to give access to a consultant uh, who works temporarily uh, it is always better to give a uh, guest access which would be easy for him to uh, onboard from his own tenant as well as uh, it would be easy uh, for uh, for your IT team also to offer so these are the benefits of guest account uh, Feel free to subscribe to uh, DevOps Info for getting more information on the Microsoft Cloud and security. Thank you.